So we've gotten to the point where we can actually calculate our climate data that we want to use for clustering to find climate zones. We calculated for one particular cluster, it was one we had played with before, and we have a bunch of values in here. Uh, it would be good to actually see this work for multiple clusters though. In fact, what I'm going to want to do is get it for all 2,000. It might be nice to start with just the first 20 instead though. And I am going to map those and calculate the ith element. Whoops. And then we could do something like cluster data I didn't want the dot for each print line. Okay, so we'll print out all the values. And we can run this. And I'll pause it because this will take a little while to, to go through. If nothing else, it has to load in a very large data set, uh, which is something that slows it down every time that we run this. So now we have this running, and it has gotten to the point where it did the original clustering and it loaded in all the data and now it is going oh but there's an exception uh, <clears throat> you'll see we have this message about the regularization parameter which doesn't really bother us because we know that our least squares fit can't overfit we only have two parameters in there uh, but this exception what's going on here now well, let's go look so it says there was a no such element exception on an iterator hmm what caused that? Well, the last thing in our code was this right here. That implies that we are, we're in the fit. So this is in code that we wrote, but apparently we're calling the fit with no data. And it turns out, yes, this happens. So the clustering for was done on the stations. It was not done on our data for 2017. And so it's actually quite possible that we have clusters that don't have max temperatures or min temperatures or precipitations. Okay, we need to handle that. So the way that I'm going to handle that is I want to make it so that if we don't have enough data, we will not give back a value. And of course, in Scala, the way you don't give back a value is to make something an option so you can give back a sum or a none. And then I'm going to come in here and I am going to say CD equals, and then if, if something, if there's not enough data, I want to give back none. Else, well, then we can do the code that we've been doing. And instead of saying CD equals down here, we can make a sum of this and close off the curly braces. And other than the fact it doesn't like our empty parentheses, and what should go inside of here? Well, we should check the counts on this. So we can say I need t maxes dot count. I actually need more than just two or three data points. So I'm going to go with 20. Okay? It's kind of an arbitrary number, but especially for the t max and t min, in order to do the, the linear fit, I need about 20 data points. So for t max, if it's less than 20, same thing for the t mins. If that count is less than 20, or for precips, this one I could probably go for less. How about three? Because all we're doing with it, we're not trying to do a linear fit on it. We'll control shift F to indent this. We're not trying to do a linear fit. All we're trying to do is get a an average and a standard deviation for precipitation. Uh, or actually not even a standard deviation, just an average. So if I have three data points for precipitation, I guess I'm willing to accept this data point. Okay. Now in doing that, now we, right now we'd get a cluster, uh, the cluster data would be an index sequence of option. That's not what I want. I want the nuns to be thrown away. There's actually a very easy way to do that. Instead of doing map, let's do a flat map. And so now this is still an index sequence of cluster data where all of the nuns will be thrown away. And we can go ahead and we can run this again, and I'll put you on pause while it loads stuff in, and we'll see if we have good values.
Okay, so here we go. We have data coming out. Zero, one, two, three, four, there is no five. Okay, so that was one of the clusters that got thrown out. There is no eight, there is no 10. Okay, uh, looks like the code is working. It didn't crash. It was happy doing those calculations. Uh, one thing that wasn't necessarily visible to people watching the video is that as this ran, it didn't utilize the machine completely. And, and I'm just running this locally. Now I'm running it locally on a machine with quite a few cores. But if I were running this on a large cluster, this flat map is a standard Scala flat map. And so I'm basically doing you know, one cluster at a time and sending it up here. And yes, this is Spark code, but it turns out that after you've filtered these things down, we're only talking about 10,000 data points. And so we're doing a lot of work here with fairly small data, which doesn't parallelize all that well. It would be better to send a whole bunch of stuff to Spark at once. Fortunately, we can do that by putting in a call to .par, and then to get it back to a sequential data structure, which we need for wrapping it inside of a, a data set, we can do a .seq. And in fact, how about I make, last thing for this video, let's make our data frame, and that will be a spark dot create. I called it data frame, but it's actually going to be a data set. And the data set can take a sequence, which should be happy with cluster data. So if I want to make the variable names match, there we go. And then, OK. That goes well for the end of this video. We'll come back and we talk, we'll talk about what we need to do in order to actually run a clustering algorithm on this data in the next video.